So let's suppose you have a double-stranded DNA molecule, and in that double-stranded DNA molecule is a gene that you want to study. Now, before you can study that gene, you have to make many copies of that gene, so that once you have many copies at your disposal, you can carry out a variety of different types of experiments with that particular gene of interest. Now, if you don't know what the sequence of nucleotides in that gene is, but if you do know where that gene is found, if you do know what the flanking sequence is, what the sequence surrounding that gene is, how exactly can you make many copies of just that gene found inside that DNA molecule? Well, in biochemistry, there's a process known as the polymerase chain reaction, or PCR, that allows us to do just that. So, the polymerase chain reaction is a very effective method by which we can actually amplify, make many copies of a single DNA segment. And it's very useful because it allows us a very quick way to make millions or even billions of copies of a single DNA molecule. It also allows us to make copies of a gene or a DNA segment that is relatively long, about 10,000 nucleotides in length. And it also allows us to make the copies without actually knowing what the sequence of nucleotides in that gene is as long as we know what the flanking sequence is. So we have to know what the flanking sequence is because we have to build DNA primers for the DNA replication process as we'll see in just a moment. So what do we mean by a flanking sequence? So let's take a look at the following double-stranded DNA molecule. Let's suppose you're given this molecule and this is the gene that we actually want to amplify. So it begins here and ends here. Now, we don't know what the sequence of nucleotides in this target sequence is, the target sequence of the sequence we want to amplify, but we do know where that DNA segment is found. We do know what the flanking sequence is. The flanking sequence are basically these sequences found on both sides of that gene of interest. So the flanking sequence is the segment of DNA that we do not want to replicate, but that we know the sequence of nucleotides because we have to know what the sequence within these sections here because we're going to build the DNA primers that can essentially hybridize with those flanking regions because uh, the DNA polymerase that is used in the polymerase chain reaction needs the primers to actually synthesize the DNA molecule. So PCR requires that we know the flanking sequence of nucleotides surrounding that target DNA segment. We need this sequence to produce DNA primers needed for replication. Now, let's actually take a look at the process of polymerase chain reaction. We can essentially break this process down into three steps or three stages. So we have step number one, step number two, and step number three. And these three steps basically compose one cycle of the polymerase chain reaction. And as we'll see at the end, we can conduct many cycles to produce as many DNA copies as we want to. So let's begin with step number one. Now, the entire point in this reaction is to basically use a special type of DNA polymerase molecule to basically replicate our DNA. Now, to begin the process of replication, the double-stranded DNA molecule must actually separate, so we have to break the hydrogen bonds. Now, what's one way to break the hydrogen bonds between the bases? Well, one way to break the bonds is to heat our solution that contains that double-stranded DNA. So if we heat our solution with that double-stranded DNA molecule of interest to a temperature of 95 degrees Celsius for about 15 seconds, then that's just enough time to basically break all those bonds between our two strands and separate our two strands. 
Now, the next process is we want to actually anneal those DNA primers that we form. So in a laboratory, because we know what the flanking sequence is, we can basically build the DNA primers that will bind onto the three end of our DNA strand. So that is shown in the following diagram. So step two is annealing of the DNA primers. The heated DNA solution now is cooled to a temperature of about 54 degrees Celsius. And that's just the right temperature for those DNA primers to actually anneal and hybridize with the three ends of those DNA strands that are now single strands. And notice these two strands of DNA will not form the hydrogen bonds because now we're going to have many of these DNA primers floating around and in between our two DNA strands. So the lower temperature will allow for the, hybrid, uh, for the hybridization between the primers and the DNA. And one DNA primer anneals to the three end of each one of these DNA strands. The reason we have to anneal at the three end because the DNA polymerase, as we'll see in step three, always reads that DNA molecule beginning at the three end and moving towards the five end because it synthesizes from the five end to the three end. So this green primer is the primer that anneals to the three end of this strand and the blue uh, DNA primer is the primer that anneals to the three end of the other DNA molecule as shown in that diagram. And finally, in step three, what we have to do is we have to use a special DNA polymerase that is heat resistant. And we can obtain this DNA polymerase from prokaryotic cells that live in hot springs because in hot springs, the temperature is high. It's about in the 70s. And so if we use this special heat resistant DNA polymerase, we place it into our mixture and we bump the temperature back up to about 72 degrees Celsius. This is the optimal temperature for this special heat resistant thermophilic DNA polymerase that is called TAC DNA. Now, what the polymerase does, like any polymerase, it uses those primers. It begins at the primers and it moves from the five to the three end to basically synthesize and replicate that DNA molecule. So that is shown in the following diagram. So once again, step three, the cooled solution at 54 degrees Celsius is heated to a temperature of 72 degrees Celsius. This is the optimal temperature for the thermophilic, so thermo is heat, philic is loving, so heat loving DNA polymerase called TAQ, so tag DNA polymerase. The polymerase begins DNA synthesis on the primers and elongates in the five to three direction on both ends. And this is shown in the following diagram. So the DNA polymerase attaches onto this five, uh, five prime primer and it moves along this direction, synthesizing the complementary strand to this DNA molecule. And likewise, another DNA polymerase attaches onto this side and moves in this direction, synthesizing the complementary strand to this DNA strand here. And so after one cycle of PCR, we have two copies of that DNA molecule. Now, the great thing about PCR is we don't have to do anything else to repeat the cycle. All we have to do is simply change the temperature back to 95 degrees Celsius. So once we complete cycle one, we're essentially in this stage. And the next step is if we want to repeat the cycle again, we increase the temperature back to 95 degrees Celsius. What will happen is these two strands, so now we have two strands, uh, we have two double helices of these DNA molecules. We increase the temperature so that they essentially separate. Then we drop the temperature to 54 degrees Celsius. We still have the primers in solution. Those primers will essentially hybridize with the proper 
lens and then we increase the temperature back to 72 degrees Celsius so that that's the temperature where DNA polymerase can begin its replication process. And once again, after cycle two completes, we essentially have four copies. So we begin with a single copy. After one cycle, we have two copies. After two cycles, we have four copies. After three cycles, we're going to have eight copies. And the general equation that describes how many copies of DNA we can theoretically produce after n number of cycles is 2 to the power of n. So this gives us the number of copies of DNA after n number of cycles. And we can see after 20 cycles, we're going to have over 1 million copies. After 30 cycles, we're going to have over 1 billion of these copies. And we began with a single DNA molecule whose DNA a sequence we did not actually know and that's the great thing about the polymerase chain reaction so we can make many many copies over a very short period of time and we don't even have to know what that sequence of that DNA segment is and we can carry the entire process out in a single beaker we don't have to even put anything in all we have to do is we have to initially combine all these ingredients so we basically need the primers, we need that DNA strand, we need the four types of deoxynucleotide 5 prime triphosphates and we need the DNA polymerase and as long as we keep on changing the temperature back and forth we're going to repeat the cycle many many times and eventually form many copies of that DNA segment that we want to study.